thing, once you've got the software downloaded, you need to install Java. So your command for that is sudo apt-get install, and make sure you grab the right one, right? Because if we don't grab the right one, life will be interesting. All right, so the JRE is going to take about 10, 15 minutes to actually download, right? So we have three components. We have Java, we have Elasticache, and we have Graylog. <sighs> this is all going on your, your MongoDB server. No one did the install JRE on Friday. So, but all this stuff goes on your Mongo server, just on your Mongo server only. Mongo. Mongo. Yeah. Especially just in a small, uh, authentic, uh, I'm hoping that everyone downloaded this software packages. I'm hoping that you will do sudo apt get install open JDK 7 JRE this morning. Huh? No. So your first step, your first step is to do the open JDK. So this is just a standard go ahead and install kind of thing. It's going to cough up a lot of stuff on your on your box. So just do a sudo app get install open JDK 7 JRE. And then we'll go through and do all the things it needs to do. And again, this should take about 10, 15 minutes to actually do this. So your first command of the day is sudo apt-get install open JDK 7 JRE. That's your first step this morning. <coughs> and then wait about 10, 15 minutes. All right, so go to wherever you installed Elasticache. You want to be in the bin directory? So uh, for me, I downloaded it into Home Student. And I want you to go... Elasticsearch, S C A R C H, minus F. Elasticsearch command not found. If you get that, it may have to. You may have to jump it. And do the dot forward on it. So, if it won't run normally, just do a dot slash. Elasticsearch, and that will set up what your nodes look like. So you're in pretty good shape once you've got this going. So this sets up all your nodes for Elasticsearch, right? Nope, you should just be able to do dot slash, and you have to be in the directory. Yep, and then go into bin. Yep, go into the bin directory. Yep. Then hit enter and then do do an ls so you can see what's actually in there so we can type it out. Do dot slash elastic search. Yep. That's all you gotta do. So where did you download it to? I thought I had it before. Nope. Go back to your wherever you downloaded it. So go into that directory. Elasticsearch. Yep. No, 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 no. That will take you all the way back up to root. No forward slashing. Now, actually, I'm working on my Batman. No, 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 no. Batman. No, now just do a star at the end of that so you can just make your life a little bit easier and you don't have to type as much because typing is an issue. Yep, and just hit enter. All right, go into the bin directory. No, 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 no. Batman. <laughs> Do an LS minus LA. <laughs> Do a dot forward slash elastic search. Typing. Typing. That's it. Hit enter. There you go. You're good. All right. Anybody else here? Anybody else ready to go? Okay, so I want you to go into your gray log directory here. And what's going to end up happening is you've got an example configuration file, right? 
So what we're going to end up doing, we have to edit this file. And this is where things get a little odd. Right, so this is kind of why I want you guys to take really, really good notes before we even get going on this one. It wants a encrypted password, right? So what you need to do is you need to go, make sure I have this absolutely right. You need to go echo, well, helps if I'm in the box, echo minus n, my password, which is this one. And then we, what we want to do is we want to use a piping character. S-H-A-S-U-M minus A-256. So what this does, right, is it tells you the, the SHA password hash for the password that you have. So like my password's password because I believe in security, right? So if you want to get into my virtual box, you type in the word password and it's good. But sometimes the system just needs to know what the hash is rather than the actual password. So what we do is we take a look at what that password actually looks like as a SHA password hash, right? And what it will do is it will give you this big, long, ugly, oh my God, string that you need to remember now, right? So what I'm gonna recommend you do is because we can't cut and paste between them, right? It is gonna be 5E, oh, what's your question, John? How's that? And then mine comes out to be 5E8848987. One five one D zero E five six F eight D C six two nine two seven seven three six zero three D. Yeah, you need to copy this down. Zero D six A A B B D D six two A one one E F. Seven two one D one five four two D eight. All right. So that's what your that's what your that's what your hash looks like for this password. This is what the hash for password looks like. All right. And it's horrible, but it's all part of it. So you need to know that. So to get that SHA summary, to get that hash using SHA, right? It says echo minus N, your password, whatever you used as a password, right? I use password because I believe in security, like a hundred other million other people. Your password may be different than mine. All right? Unless everybody used password. Pipe character. And then SHA sum minus A256. SHA SUM, S H A S U M, minus A256. And then copy that down because you're going to want this for your configuration file. All right? You can, but remember, we're on a server. You can only have one thing open at a time. All right. All right, another command we need to type is pwd pw gen minus s96. So that's one thing we need to type. If we don't have it, right, we need to go sudo apt get install pwgen, which may actually happen, okay? So remember, I'm recording this, so at least we've got that. Uh-huh. So pwgen, all right, so pwgen minus s96, all right? So this actually generates a password that's just like horrible. So what I want to do is I'm going to add this to, all right, just so that I've got it because that's like horrible. All right, because that's just a horrible thing to, to have to deal with, right? Yep. 
All right, and that's all we've got to do here. So what we want to do is we want to copy gray log to minus sign radio dot conf dot example to gray log to minus radio dot conf. All right, so now we have our configuration file. Right, so that's the one that we need to have. And then we're going to want to sudo nano graylog2 minus radio dot conf. And this is what we've got in here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want to give this my external IP address, the external URL. Really? Number lock? No. All right, so we have to put in our IP address underneath the server URI, right? Our REST listen URI, we're just going to leave that at localhost. Right, we're not going to be any doing any transport or anything else. Right, we're not going to be doing any brokers. But we're just going to kind of leave this where it is, and we're going to take out. And our broker 192.168.203.201, which is my IP address. So we have our broker. All right. Again, we're going to be opening up a lot of ports to make this happen. All right. Here's what I've changed. The server URI should be set to your IP address. The REST listen URI should be set to your local loopback. All right, it needs to have both because it does internal processing along the way. All right? Your REST transport URI, I'm not going to muck about with it because we're not going to be using REST in this program. All right? Your Kafka broker, you should set it to your IP address. Do we want to have stuff that will actually go ahead and transfer in background? We're going to leave it at its default of 200. Ba wait 250 milliseconds. We'll leave that. Required. So we're not going to touch any of this. Right? Weight strategy, size of initial ring buffers, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to kind of leave it where it is. Right? So it kind of makes sense? All right, so I think that's got it. So we're going to exit out. We're going to save it. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to go in the bin directory, make sure we've got everything there, that it's got its little radio control and that's actually good to go CD into log we want to make sure what we got there All right so there's no log so we should be good to go so we should be pretty well good to go there now there's a lot of stuff in here All right. Um, hold on just a second let me just kinda go through this right so what we want to do is we want to make sure what we got right we want to kinda make sure uh, this thing actually working so what we want to do is we want to go Java minus jar gray log to radio dot jar. And what I want to do is I want to throw it in debug mode so I can actually make sure that it's actually doing what it needs to do. All right. So it's looking for the Etsy gray log two directory. So it's actually going all the way up. So it's actually looking for that comp file. So what we can do is copy graylog to radio dot conf to Etsy, right? Because that's where it's going to look. Pseudo cp. Oh man. 
command. ATC. All right, so that should work. So let's see if I can start this bad boy up. All right, so now we start throwing exceptions. So that's the reason for wanting to do this in debug is to make sure of what we've got, right? It's looking for file not found or permission denied, right? So if it's permission denied, what I may need to do is do a sudo and see if that will actually work. All right, and that's much better. So I need to run this as sudo, right? And that debug, this is telling me everything that it's doing right now. And this is why debug is actually kind of handy to make sure that everything's running the way it should run. When you're done, just hit control C and go. And then when we're ready to run it, we just take out the debug steps. Yep, and that's it. So we can kind of see where it needs to run kind of in a batch file. We may actually need to batch that, this up so that we can actually do stuff that we need to do with it. But that's essentially it. Once you start getting this whole process going, that's really all there is to getting Graylog up and running and getting it good to go on your box. So the good part is that I actually recorded this, right? So there's a couple of other things that we probably really want to do, right? And it looks like we've got some other issues that are going on here. And we're getting connection refused, so that means that there's some other stuff we need to do here. So what we may need to do then is go ahead, because these items are missing from their file, what we can do is we can sudo nano graylog2 radio.conf. And what we can do is we can add this stuff to the bottom, right? So what we may want to do is we may want to say is master is equal to true because your box is going to be the master box, right? Save this here for a minute. Now let's see if I can actually do this. What I want to do is I want to copy all this. Because I really don't want to type all that stuff up. So let's see what we got here. And then my root password SHA2 is this absolutely horrible thing.